Welcome to Inside Builder channel, large language model automators, Python experts and my dear friends. Beyond the basics, advanced vector indexing and stores, selecting the best index for your app. What questions we will discuss in this discussion? Why we cannot use traditional databases for vector similarity search? What are the bottlenecks in vector stores and why they are present? What to look for when you select a vector index store or a Python client for vector stores? The target audience. Who are you? You are a developer, a problem solver who is new to artificial intelligence and large language models arena, who recently found about the vector stores. An experienced system designer, architect and administrator tasked with a new design around vector stores. A business leader, a senior manager, who is trying to wrap around the concept of vector stores you could be any one of these and all these people and also you could be an enthusiast who is trying to work around the challenges that you are facing currently as i was telling every you know every idea is solves an expensive problem and that idea is going to have a bottleneck so let us first of all get an eagle view of the vector store let us begin with the expensive problem that the vector store solves fine tuning if you guys have been like me who got introduced to chat gpt in the month of october or november and you have seen the rapid expansion of the customer base of open ai models you must have come across the concept of concept of uh, the fine tuning and the reason why you would have come across this concept is you wanted to use your data to work with the large language models like open ai text davinci or chat gpt Storing the, the concept of fine tuning is not the main point of this discussion. But we know that fine tuning is going to be an extremely cost intensive and also time consuming process. And the, the method of doing the fine tuning is not only going to cost you money, it is going to cost the climate, the challenges of using the electric power. All of these things are involved in fine tuning. So what is the uh, you know alternate? That's where the vector store came in. The vector stores, vector stores act as a database which holds the necessary data that you are going to send it to the large language model. So large language model can read the data and answer to your question. If vector stores were not there, what is the process? We have to take take the data that we have, cut it into small pieces right we have to you know sl uh, uh, slice it into small pieces and then based on the size of the uh, the large language model context we have to send the query to the large language model i have myself done this and it is a tedious process in the what i mean by slicing so let me go down so i will show you in a real case scenario so now we have a don't worry about the content of this table i, I will get to that later this is just an example now you have a six, uh, six row table here and uh, assume that the large language model can only read the two rows of this table. That is the context size that the large language model is allowed like text DaVinci, chat GPT or whatever model it is, even GPT-4. GPT-4 has 32,000 tokens, but still we have bigger tables, right? So if you take a Spark table, we have 1 million rows and the columns can extend up to, you know, 200, 300 columns. 32,000 tokens are nothing. At that time what we will do so we have to actually you know sl uh, split the tables into small small uh, you know call uh, co small small smaller uh, number of rows and then feed it to the large language model and then what we have to do is we'll, we should ask the large language model to answer it but is this going to work in a long run or is this going to work in a dynamic environment i really doubted at that time so before that is before four months and that is when i got the uh, let me go down yeah i got to introduce got introduced to vector stores through langchain so i was uh, primarily using langchain and in langchain there is a there is an entire uh, column i mean there is an entire topic on indexes so let me go to the browser for a moment and this is the langchain documentation and they saw that uh, today you see lots of <laughs> options here and on the time when i started uh, understanding about the vector stores 
the major vector stores like it starts from atlas db even analytical db was there anna was there so lot of vector stores were already there so out of them chroma fies um, milvis pg vector pinecone all of these vector stores i already had discussed in a separate video i had uh, tried to understand how these vector stores work and i wanted to compare them so that particular discussion i had already had and i will attach that video also along with this video so you will get an idea and apart from that also there is a concept of embedding i will discuss that in the next step so why i am discussing all this let us go back to the presentation for a moment the reason why i am discussing this is the purpose or the you know the problem that the vector store solves is to avoid fine tuning it's as simple as that you don't want to you know throw a lot of power lot of time on something that is going to take i mean it's not going to be very efficient but vector stores give a very very good alternate so all you need to do is create a database vector stores basically database i will explain to you further you update the data into the database but after updating it to the database you need to find a way where the llm itself can query the vector store this is the tricky part and that is where the concept of similarity search came into picture you see the story unfolding so you have to give the control to the large language model so how are you going to give, give that large language model can understand the natural language uh, natural language contexts and vector source should be made to uh, okay let us not think like that way the database should be made to understand the natural language context however the existing databases cannot do that existing databases can work with select or select statements or the data manipulation language that is available in the rdbms however vector large language model if you are going to train for it then again it's going to be fine tuning right uh, you understand what i'm trying to say so if you want uh, someone actually asks how you do the fine tuning so someone says that okay get me the uh, get me the uh, number of uh, first name in this particular uh, database so if someone asks this question then it should be fine tuned in such a way that the large language model will convert it into the dml that is uh, database manipulation data manipulation language and then query the database which is not easy in fact i tried that also and then i realized okay that should be a better option and then when i was searching going through the uh, langchain uh, discord server langchain uh, you know community where i was where we were all discussing about what's going on that's when vector stores came came into picture but the the story doesn't end there as i always said the expensive problem will have a bottleneck the bottleneck in this case is the speed of data import and the retrieval time so these are the two major bottlenecks that the vector store will face please keep in mind the data import time and retrieval time are just a fraction of time that is going to take for the fine tuning so we are not comparing with the keeping in mind that we are working on uh, you know solving a very big problem the comparison has to be with the different uh, uh, different set of factors so we have already you know decided that vector stores are going to completely replace fine tuning so uh, once we replace fine tuning we are talking about now vector stores and vector stores are kind of a database we need to compare the way vector stores work with respect to the traditional databases so our comparison should be in such a fashion so we cannot compare the uh, for an example compare a table with a chair so it doesn't make sense right the same way we should uh, compare the vector stores with the database so what we are going to do is we need to also think about how the vector stores support uh, crud operations high availability horizontal scalability and concurrent access all these kinds of discussions uh, the team who is going to uh, implement these vector stores have to think about now coming to the before we go further deep into it let us uh, discuss about the parts of the vector stores so a vector store is basically a database which contains vectors and the media that is the data that you are going to store inside the database and the encoding model so this model is a machine learning uh, and artificial intelligence model that can be either open source or it can be closed source like open ai embedding uh, uh, functions and this is also a part of the vector store so this is one of the main point you you have to realize in the traditional database there is going to be just media okay and there is going to be instead of vectors there is going to be keys that is uh, you know indexes Uh, basic numbers or kind of hashes that is going to be there but there will not be any kind of encoding model so this is something that you anybody who is looking into vector store should realize 
second so this is how the data will come out of the vector store uh, data will be stored inside the vector store for an example there will be class so i am talking this is one of the vector store uh, vv8 vector store that i am using here as an example so there are many other uh, open source vector stores but i there is no uh, see i should i should be frank with you guys i am trying to be as uh, open uh, open to new technologies so uh, please don't mistake that i am using uh, this particular uh, uh, particular example because this is much more easier and it is available already so that's only i am using it so vv8 vector stores have uh, classes i will also explain these points also in a moment and we uh, the uh, the class also has the vector as i was telling the vector and the media this is the content that i was talking about right and uh, and the vector so we have the media we have the vector and the model is already uh, part of the this particular class so this is how the vector store is uh, architected right uh, this particular uh, data that you are seeing is coming from the particular uh, you know uh, collection or a class called vim texts now this is the part of the vector store parts of the vector store now steps of a similarity search in case of steps of a similarity search in order to do a similarity search we need vectors a vector from the our physics uh, sixth standard physics we know that vector is a magnet contains of magnitude and direction so this is vector while the direction part of the vector is the key for finding the similarity between two vectors this is the key concept that you have to realize you don't need to understand how the mathematics is you don't need to you know uh, worry about how the implementation is being done in the programming level all these things are taken care by the vector store developers right all you need to know is what they are doing so uh, in the in the implementation level what the developers of these vector stores are doing as a user as the senior manager or you know the designer you have to understand that part only next comes the uh, the similarity search part so when you search what is going to happen so user has to give a query and this query is going to be of any form it could be text audio image video or any other media that you are talking about and this particular query will be converted to vectors uh, that is using the encoding model the same model that is available inside the vector store that is one one leg the other leg is the dynamic data that you are going to query up query upon is already fed into the vector store it is already available there and the data encoded inside the vectors is converted so this step is also getting done now what happens this leg is already completed and this leg is also completed so both of these two both of these combine together into similarity search and the output result comes so this is where the actual magic happens okay so yeah there are lots of magic in this steps also but this is where the main magic happens so that is what we are going to do uh, deal with next just a comparison between vector stores and uh, regular rdbms database so in uh, rdbms database if you if you say something as table or relation in case of vector store it's, it will be either called as collections or class if you are going to call something as keys primary secondary key there are so many keys in uh, you know rdbms or no sql you will be calling it as vectors so understand this vectors are going to be the this is a confusing aspect of the vector stores in case of uh, the uh, the regular R, uh, regular dbms what you will do is there will be keys that we will assign or we will ask the database server itself to generate some keys and that will generate it uh, based on the data that we push into the rdbms so we will use that uh, keys as a reference point but in case of uh, the vector stores what happens is first of all the data uh, where it is the data that we push into the vector store is uh, is read and then these vectors are created so the 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 reference points these vectors are part of the data that is pushed that is media that is pushed in this is something that uh, is little difficult to imagine but once you grasp this concept then you will understand how the vector stores are working so try to linger on this uh, topic for a minute and also you can check my earlier github repos so just a minute this is the repo or this is the particular jupyter notebook that i am you know referring to where i in discussed about the data retrieval from a vector store the vv8 vector store that i am discussing so you can actually review this particular notebook so i'll be sharing the link for this particular notebook let us go back to the pdf 
you can see how this process works so how this leg of this process and the second leg where we load the data how these two steps work and how the similarity search is done so all these things are there in that that notebook so you can take a look at that and then how the results are coming out all these things you can see uh, you know step by step the reason why i am you know making a separate video with a different uh, outlook is that uh, as i was telling the uh, the objective the the audience of this particular video is a little bit different because i heard a lot of uh, uh, questions and uh, you know feedback coming uh, on the vector stores because that is going to be the key uh, you know key uh, player in this new arena of large language models so that's why uh, i am making a different more uh, you know more basic video and also which introduces more advanced concepts also where you compare the things because you might be from a database administration or you might have already got a very good experience in uh, uh, you know system administration system development etc but this technology might be new and you want to come up to speed rapidly then this video will be help to you so here natural language nl is natural language query and uh, natural language query plus similarity search is similar to the select query i was explaining right if i am going to give a natural language query and similarity uh, search and if i have to fine tune it think what will happen it will take a lot of time a lot of time lot of effort etc and a regular person cannot do it right someone has to be trained in natural language processing trained with lots of models uh, accessing those models can be a challenge so i mean uh, let us not discuss about the challenges now okay let us discuss about how to solve the challenges and here we see the last point where we uh, talk about the python clients we have uh, for an example in uh, case of traditional databases we have psychopg uh, we have uh, psychopg binary we have pyspark for uh, uh, you know spark related uh, data uh, data warehouses and in case of uh, vector stores we have vvet quadran chroma db face uh, lots of clients so as i showed in the lang langchain uh, library there are lots of clients coming to the next step now we already saw the parts of the vector stores we already saw how these things are uh, you know internally built now we are going to check this point the point where the dynamic data or the query from the user is converted to vectors and how these vectors are helping us to work with the similarity search so we need to go a little deeper into this step so these two uh, these two arrow marks are there we are going to discuss that part of the uh, process as i was discussing in case of vector stores the data is pushed into the uh, vector stores and the data is encoded and converted into the index so the data is pushed into the vector store and then the data is converted to vectors so this vectors and this vectors acts as the key to the data so you see the circular nature of it which is not the case in the traditional database so traditional database there is no any link between the document and the key but in case of the uh, vector stores there is a proper link between the vectors and the documents or the data this is the point uh, is called as indexing you don't need to worry about the de definition okay definition is for if you want to use it somewhere to write it yeah this definition you can use it but yeah the the significance is what is more important once you create a vector in order to find the documents all you need to do is find the appropriate vectors and to find the vectors there is something called as approximate approximate nearest neighbor search algorithm let us go to this step so the query that you are going to send in is also converted to vectors the dynamic data is already converted into vectors the the distance between these two vectors is what is going to decide which document will get retrieved that is the point this particular definition is talking about why it is called as approximate in this uh, nearest neighbor search algorithm the not the uh the exact data or the exact media or the document is not retrieved the data that is retrieved is approximate in nature because the exact vector is also not retrieved think about it if i am going to take a data and if i am going to encode it through any of the large language models or any of the machine learning models any uh, no two data will have same vectors so there will be a lot there will be completely different different vectors only even how many permutation combination we make the the probability that two 
different sentences so what i mean is the following are related to the activities on splits so this is one of the sentence and that is one more sentence that says that the following is related with the activities of the split so both the sentences are making the same output right both the sentences are meaning the same thing in english but when you are going to put it as vectors there will be difference in the vector data so no two vectors will be same because of this when you are going to use approximate nearest neighbors there will be multiple outputs not single output this is very sim uh, uh, different from the search we have been using so whenever we use search for an example if you are using find uh, algorithm inside python if you are going to use google uh, to search for a particular word they uh, all these algorithms try to act to exactly pinpoint the particular search query so that's why we have keywords that's why we have lots of you know discussion around how to improve the search how to work with the uh, you know big documents etc but in case of vector stores that's not how it works so only the approximate nearest neighbors are going to be retrieved and most of the time this is more than sufficient why is that because let us again go back see there is going to be lots of back and forth in my presentation so please please bear with it what happened is the reason why did we start all these things we wanted to send dynamic data right where is it so we wanted to send the uh, dynamic or custom data into the large language model and you are not going to send a single row of data right you are going to send at least couple of rows of data or couple of paragraphs of data so you, uh, as a large language model the language model is going to comprehend the meanings and the embedded uh, information and then it is going to respond to you so you there is no reason for us to give the exact search result that is one of the main point of approximate nearest neighbor search so even if it is going to be approximate the large language model will finally read the context and give you the answer that you are asking for so this is a win win that is uh, you know uh, very fortunate for us uh, it's not just fortunate it's mathematics people have been working towards this for a long time only thing is now things technologies are converging together and things are working out so uh, the thing is that initially when uh, when we start with two different uh, aspects so no one will no one thought that radioactivity is going to become a nuclear fission reactor that will power our uh, power our uh, day to day life right so like that so lot of things will come together and help us when it comes to the next step so now you understood what is approximate nearest neighbor we are understood what is indexing etc etc so you you must have already got a fair idea what is going on here but now comes the in, in important point so these things okay let me let me cut cut it short so in 22 minutes you have actually understood what uh, you have completed the discussion so i can actually end this particular discussion here itself so uh, let me uh, let me actually review this because after this again i am going to go into details of the indexes so if you are uh, if you are uh, you know part of any of these system designer or if you are part of any of the senior leaders the whatever is going to come next may not be of use to you however i am going to explain it if you want you can uh, you know continue watching it but i will just uh, you know uh, do a recap for you so we discussed what is the questions that you will be addressing so why we cannot use traditional database i explained it what are the bottlenecks i explained it and what to look for when you select for the vector index so this is something that you have to still understand so we i discussed about the bottlenecks and we saw that based on the vector index store the the way you are going to uh, choose the vectors and do the similarity search you will get the vector output so this is sufficient for uh, that particular level of uh, you know the level of understanding that is required for you but in case if you want to understand how to really solve the problems if you want to dive deeper uh, like a developer uh, you want to understand how how the application will really you know interact then let us continue further with that said let us go down the i had spoken about this step right where the uh, data or the query is converted to the encoded vectors this encoding process and then storing can be done in multiple types of indexes the vector that you are creating so let me show you so this is the vector for an example so this is the data and this is the vector this vector can be stored in different different ways and that is called as indexes there are various types of indexes like flat index ivf ivf sq8 ivf pq rnsg hnsw all these are various ways to store this uh, uh, this particular vector 
and how to retrieve the data from this vector how to do the similarity search how to you know work with the metrics that is available to find the vectors between uh, multiple uh, data all these things are included in this uh, discussion so uh, what i what i want to you know i am not going to explain all these points step by step but one thing i want to clearly explain that is the first one because this is the this is something that you have to understand the rest of the things are linked with this so what is a flat index the data stored in flat array or flat array of float and binary so what this line means is this particular example so a flat array meaning a simple array of float float means decimal numbers that is stored as array so this is what this line means and it looks like this so when you are going to store an array of float that is not going to be any compression it's going to cons each each of this letter right each of this particular number will uh, consume four byte sometimes in certain uh, uh, certain databases it can be eight byte also and all these numbers will add up and each vector will have a considerable number of size and that is what is mainly uh, changed in these indexes the size the way the speed with which the data is retrieved the recall rate how best the data is getting recalled and how fast the data is encoded all these things depend on the type of indexes you are going to choose so as a developer if you are going to be a system designer then these points are going to be very very important because the design decision you make now on choosing the vectors uh, the indexes is going to be crucial most of the time hnsw is chosen hnsw is a graph uh, based uh, index and it has a better uh, uh, better recall at the same time it is also faster when compared to the regular ivf that is inverted file index uh, okay i am not going to dive into inverted file index i would uh, request you guys to you know look into lo look up that it's pretty simple you guys will understand and once the inverted file index you understand and you have already seen what is flat index once you understand inverted file index then inverted scalar quantization and inverted scalar quantization using gpu these things are all linked together and uh, product quantization in the inverted file product quantization is also one of the types of reducing the file uh, the vector storage size so all these uh, algorithms are trying to uh, make the vector store as efficient and as uh, uh, you know fast as possible so that is the target of these algorithms the problem that they are solving is not something that uh, as a user or as a uh, as a person who is trying to create a new app uh, a new app idea so without even knowing all these things if you basically simply go ahead and use hnsw also it will work that's what i'm trying to say you as a as a basic app developer you may not even understand these things but after you start developing app multiple complex scenarios arises your system is not responding as you expected at that time you might actually you know have some challenges and so uh, you might have to come back to this usually what happens this kind of uh, challenges occurs in the mvp itself that is minimum minimum viable product itself you will face all this problem and then you will start learning but for minimum viable product actually you don't need to learn this this is what i am trying to say right and if you want more details you can refer to this wiki uh, facebook research has done an excellent uh, you know wiki on uh, phis and along with that they have discussed about lots of other quantization and uh, indexing processes which i have not uh, you know discussed here this is something that i wanted to show the reference i have taken the reference from milvis uh, documents i have taken the reference from vba documents i have read a lot of other documentations in open source and then i am collecting and sharing it, this information with you guys so uh, i really thank all those developers who have spent their time to give me this information uh, i want to give the reference back to them that is very important here is the tabular column which shows the pros and cons of each of the index like i was explaining so hnsw has high speed query better recall rate and large memory resources it has a con also you need larger uh, ram for uh, uh, hnsw but yeah ram is not going to be a challenge for us i i hope so uh, so this is the scenario if not then you can try for the ivf pq so pq is something that uh, most of the uh, vector stores are right now supporting uh, most of the vector stores i am not saying all uh, 
so keep that in mind when you are going to go and choose a vector stores you might have to look at these things when you are going to go to production right coming down further so these are the metrics that you have to look for so i am not going to explain these metrics but yeah these are the metrics you have to look for uh, the recall rate the query per second the import time etc the how the distance uh, metrics is uh, uh, implemented inside the vector stores so these are the various metrics that is available and implemented uh, as i was telling these are all you know taken care by the vector store developers the python client developers uh, from the perspective of the users from the perspective of the system designers also you may not need to worry about these things but knowing this is good finally so this point uh, this is the point where uh, the decision making and trade offs are discussed based on your user profile so if a user profile uh, is uh, someone who can wait uh, someone who can work with uh, a little bit uh, wrong information or little bit uh, dissimilar or unwanted information then yeah you can uh, choose the recall rate choose the you know vector indexes accordingly but if it is a mission critical data store if it is a mission critical application then you need to have a proper uh, you know flat index that is better because it has 100% recall rate it does not deviate at all and if you are going to use uh, if you are thinking about python client there are lots of python clients already created and abstracted for you you don't need to really uh, dive deep but yeah you have to understand uh, to a level where i have explained to you right now and uh, there are lots of benchmarks available also for each of these open source uh open source uh, vector stores by comparing with other uh, closed source also uh, you can take a look at that it is available across the github uh, you can do a google search also for that and you will get a lot of information with that i would like to come to the close of this particular discussion i hope this hope you like and uh, like this discussion i hope this was useful for you to you know understand better about the vector stores we discussed a lot of points here uh, because i i myself was you know little bit confused with the overview of vector stores so i wanted to think about you know how to present this particular concept every vector open source vector store have their own way of introducing their product that should be unified way to make the problem clear right what is the problem that you are solving that is the most important point i wanted to highlight i hope that you understood the problem the fine tuning problem that you are solving and how we are leveraging the knowledge that we have from the regular database and how we are converting that i mean transfer learning that knowledge to the the vector stores that you are going to use so we saw the parts of the vector stores we discussed how the search step of the vector store is working so we looked into all this stuff and finally uh, we also defined about the indexes worked with the uh, i mean i explained to you the details of the indexes the pros and cons etc with that said i would like to come to the close of this uh, particular uh, video uh, do subscribe to my channel for further updates on similar videos and uh, with that said i would like to leave this video with four different words this time that is learn 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 with that said thanks for watching see you guys have a great day